fish. There you go. Oh man. There you go. There you go. What's happening guys? It's your boy Dan right back at you again with another episode of 302 Fishing. Welcome back to the channel here. Before we get out on the water here today, guys, I want to take a few brief moments here and appreciate every one of you guys and be thankful uh, for you guys and allowing us to continue on this YouTube journey. As of a couple days ago, with all of your efforts here, and as well people that I know personally, and of course others that I've collabed with, we achieved 4,000 subscribers, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have no doubt that you guys will continue to help us get through this journey and go to the next level, and that's getting to 5,000 subscribers. I know for a fact we can get there by the end of this year. So keep up that great work. If you're new, guys, and you haven't already done so, smash up on that subscribe button, click that notification bell that we inform of all of our future episodes. Of course, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, drop a comment below, and you can follow us on Instagram at 302fishing. Uh, we're gonna try to make this brief here as possible and then we're gonna get out on the water. It is ridiculously hot again out here in the state of Delaware. You're the armpit of all weather here in our country because <laughs> we get all the humidity here. But it's well over 90 degrees. I was gonna try to come out fishing yesterday but a crazy thunderstorm came through and kind of blew through of the chance to try to fish on Tuesday. It's now Wednesday. Still got the sticky weather guys. But a plethora of baits can be used on these hot, muggy, nasty days when the sun is out there and it's just a beaming. Uh, most people come out in the morning and the evenings, they do their top water thing, whopper ploppers, frogs, buzz baits. Those top water baits you can use out there. Uh, you come out middle of the day, again, beginning of the afternoon or morning or evening, and you can come out with some soft plastics. Uh, you can come out with some crawls, you can come out with some jigs. Uh, but the one bait we're gonna pay particular close attention to, and what I see a lot of people out there fishing with in the advice uh, during the summer uh, time, um, fishing uh, expeditions that you go out onto, you kind of kind of consider this as like winter. You know, when the fish are there, they're really slow and lethargic. What's well, kind of the same effect here in summer. When it gets super hot, these fish do not want to move very, very much. And they're not going to go ahead and chase little baits. They're going to try to catch the biggest thing in their mouth that they can with the least amount of effort. So that way they can just go back to the shade lines or wherever they need to be in order to go ahead and stay cool. Because uh, again, the fish can't cope well in heat as well. They can't cope well in, in the winter as well but we are going to come out with a big old bait today i've never used the size bait before i've used this type of bait before but it's going to be a first it's not the largest uh, by this maker but it is almost close to it so we're going to come out with the slim shake worm that's by guggen baits right here that's black blue flake normally we do five inch worms in our episode maybe not even any bigger than that this is an eight inch bait, guys, it's huge. So we're gonna try to go ahead and put this on here uh, weightless first, and if it can't get the distance that I need, we'll throw a little bit of a weight there. That way we can get a little bit further out, but we got some shade lines out there. We're gonna go ahead and throw it out deep to see if they're sitting there huddled all together. But I got a feeling if we, we can do what we need to do on this pond right here, we're gonna get a big old fish whack it up on this giant bait right here. So give me a moment, let's wrap it up there, and let's get lucky and see if we can try to get one of those big fat green bean bags to bash up on this bait. We made it out to the first opening. First thing I have noticed, this pond is always consistent uh, in its water level. But this year, just like any of the other ponds that we've been dealing with, we've been losing uh, some water here through evaporation. We've had a lot of water uh, as of the last couple weeks, but uh, we're still losing, again, water regardless because of the heat. Uh, about two feet of shoreline's gone right here, uh, because usually it's all the way up to here. But the plan of attack on this pond right here is we're gonna stay way away from over here. That's gonna be hot as hell over there. You know no fish are gonna sit over there because it's gonna be as hot as a bathtub over there uh, because the sun's been beaming on that edge for the longest, longest time. We are gonna attack the shade line, which is from here all the way down to the end. Uh, if you know in the middle of this pond, there is that dock that's over there. So that's all we're gonna be casting along. And of course, under uh, those trees right across the way, I'm watching minnows skittering all over the place. Impacts right here, guys. There's gonna be a bass around here somewhere. So we're gonna hopefully get that giant over in that area over there if the same activity is happening over there towards that dock. But they are all over the shoreline and I can see lots of swirls here going on. I don't see any blow ups as of yet. But I'm sure as that sun goes down, it will happen. Even though it's 6.30 in the evening, guys, it is still sweltering hot. You always still wanna consider hydrating yourself at all times. I carry a bottle of water with me. So we're gonna take a few swigs of that. We're gonna put that worm on there. We're gonna start casting around here, guys, and see if we try to get some action going on. I got my hook on here. It's an EWG. I'm pretty sure this is an Eagle Claw uh, EWG. 
and uh, I don't have any red ones left so we're gonna go with the black right here you know I always like using the red hooks but it really doesn't matter for most people again I, it's just in my head that guys <laughs> but we're gonna use this hook right here uh, it's already tied on by a Palomar nut I've showed you guys many times how to do that uh, again you guys can look it up on YouTube I figure that knot out but it is one of the strongest knots out there but we're gonna go ahead and get this bait out of here show you the length of it how it looks and then uh, how we're gonna put it on here I mean it's still gonna be the same as you would normally Texas rig uh, a normal sized worm, but just a slight little variation. That's all So normally you would take the bend of the hook right here You can see that in the sunlight you would come to the tip right there And then you make a curve, but we're not gonna do that because of how long this bait is We're gonna come to the point And then we're gonna go a little bit further on the bait maybe about an inch possibly and you're gonna bring that through like you would the regular Texas rig and the reason why we're doing this is, is when we bring this hook through you want this hook a little further down into the bait itself because again you want to make sure that these fish are able to get onto the hook so we got to pass the little edge right there you can see it uh, that's the uh, the shank part right there where that uh, curl is and then we're gonna put it right in there in the middle and just do like we'd normally do with that uh, worm and keep it straight as possible because normally if we would have Texas rigged the other way, it would have been way up here, the hook here. So now it's almost towards the middle of the bait, so they got a chance to swallow a portion of the bait, and we got a chance to go ahead and hook that fish up uh, pretty good. But I'm seeing these minnows scatter around, guys. Uh, there's probably a little one there. I saw one swoop up a little bit earlier, uh, but that's not what we're going for today. But let's get the, that worm in the water. We're going to try weightless first, as I mentioned. But we're going to have to scare these guys away. You can see like at least, at least a dozen minnows right here. Might have problems with bluegills tugging on the bottom as well as the uh, tiny little bass. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is just kind of drag it across the bottom, little skitters. I would prefer to have it on a shaky head, but I don't have one on me. Because that would have been the preferred way to go ahead and put that worm on there. But I had to order this through uh, Carl's uh, Bait and Tackle, man. Guys, if you love that uh, discounted price on any of your baits right there, Carl's is the place to be. I'm going to drop a link down below that you can go to. Uh, a lot of good uh, discounts that are over there and uh, substantially lower than the prices you get out in your normal uh, uh, shops out there, whether it be Dick's or, or your local stores, your uh, bait stores and everything else like that. There's a fish right there na uh, nagging on it. Fish on, guys. There you go. That's a decent one, guys. That is a decent one. Oh, there you go, guys. Look at this. Big and oh, <laughs> that is exactly why you use this bait right here because you get big fish just like that, guys. <laughs> but he's feeding up on those minnows, what I just mentioned to you earlier. So let's get this hook out of here. We'll go ahead and get this fish away. Oh wait there, boy this heat is really affecting my speech guys, I apologize. There we go, hooks out, we got a fat belly guys. All right, we're all zeroed out. Pretty, pretty green colors on this fish guys. There we go, that is definitely a big fat green bean bag. Three pounds, five ounces, a whole pound heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Pretty, pretty fish, guys. Look at the absolute gorgeous colors on that fish. My goodness gracious. <laughs> First time ever using that worm. But let's get a good uh, release going on here. And uh, send this little mama on its way. Woo! She's ready to go. One bad thing you should be not doing, guys, is dropping your reel into the water like that. Especially your Corrado. <laughs> Gotta get a fresh new bait on there fish kind of ripped it in half but that again is like I said the first time I've ever caught a big bass underneath those bushes out in this section here in the back left hand corner of this pond if you look at this bait when you have it guys it's not completely round I mean it's got pretty cool looking uh, ribs on it to kind of create more vibrations in the water but there's a flat bottom that's on the bottom of this that's where you want the hook to come and loop through is that backside right there I don't have any more four odd hooks so that's kind of why we're using the 
the three aught right now. It's not the most ideal hook to use, but you gotta improvise, guys, sometimes. There we go, ready to rock. I really like the look of this bait, though. It looks sexy as hell. I'm curious to see how these small ones swallow up this eight inch bait. You know darn well if they do, it's gonna be two times bigger than they are. But these dinks, man, they're aggressive, man. They'll, they'll swallow anything, they don't care. There you go. Oh man. There you go. There you go. Oh, another nice one, guys. Another nice one. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Big summer bass. Big summer bass. These fish are no joke in this pond today. I told you there's some big ones in this pond. Wow, that was three ounces bigger than the other one. Three pounds, six ounces. <laughs> They're getting bigger, fellas. All right. I know he sees those minnows around there. <laughs> and she's gone. There's two big fat green bean bags right out of the shaded area right there. But I'm thoroughly stoked. Two great looking fish. Everything else is gonna be a bonus here. This is an absolute perfect day that we have right here because this pond usually is scummed over completely because I was thinking in my mind as I was working before I came out, do I need to bust out the frog? But there is absolutely no algae whatsoever here at all because uh, usually this back corner here is all gunked up and way back in that channel down there is always jacked up. But I'm glad we got a lot of uh, real estate to work with here. Something's nibbling on this bait right here. There you got fish on. There you go, a little one. Oh, he came off. <laughs> he was about as big as the bait, guys. <laughs> Couldn't have been any more bigger than that. Fish. There you go. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. That's another one too. Stick on, guys. Fish got off. <laughs> wow. That was a big one on there, guys. <laughs> you saw it move to the left-hand side. Ooh. I think we had a fish on, guys, and I let him go. He's still on there. He's still on there. Pick it up. Come on, you got it? He's goofing with it, guys. There you go, got him. Little one. <laughs> I told you we're gonna catch one as big as the bait, guys. <laughs> He kept pecking and pecking at me. Whoa, 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 whoa. These are the ones you gotta watch out for. As I tell you, these dinks like to destroy your body. There you go, guys. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next section here and get away from that dink. I looked at the clock on my phone. It's almost eight o'clock. That means we have just about a half an hour worth of light left, so we're gonna go right straight for the dock and see if we can try to land another big one right before sunset here. I think I made the right decision here as I was walking down the way here. It's super shallow. Uh, that dock over there should be floating in the water and it's kind of sh about as shallow as that right there. So we got a little bit of depth that's right out in here and of course we got this uh, brush that's right over here. 
but we're going to try to attack and hopefully we can get as far as over there if not we have to put a weight on to get there but there's going to be a bass around here somewhere once more the slim shake worm eight inches black blue flake that's what we're using oh boy old man bones <laughs> i think i'm going to cast to my left over here first see if there's anything sitting up underneath them trees but here we go Oop. Fish on. Oh my goodness gracious, I just broke my line, guys. <laughs> there was a fish under there. Alright, we gotta retie. I must have had a little bit of a fray in the line in order to snap it like that. Gotta make sure this hook lasts. It's the only one I got left here. I only brought two. Go fish out. There you go. <laughs> oh, I flung the worm. That's not the big one that's uh, jumping around over there. But uh, another dinker. She's gone. If you're liking what you're seeing so far guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell of course give us that big fat thumbs up to help us out on the algorithm we'd greatly appreciate it once more thank you for getting us to 4,000 subscribers oh, I think it's another one little one pecking at me I try to stay away from these little ones. All right. <laughs> Guess we're playing games with the small ones, guys. He swallowed that whole eight inch worm that little guy <laughs> holy crap that is absolutely amazing all right let me get my pliers and you're gonna watch eight inches of a uh, worm come out of his mouth look at that guys a whole eight inches of worm was in there all you saw was the head that was exposed on that fish and he swallowed that thing <laughs> That's a pretty cool way to end a video, huh? And she's gone. <laughs>